one, but they got it. Yeah, I don't feel good about it, though. Why? Because it was a little too close and it shouldn't have been because the king stink? No, it's just before the game, Drew Doughty was mad. Drew Doughty was mad? Yeah. Who cares? I know, it's like, shut up. Hi, kids! Victorious puppies! Huh? This team is ruining my life! Why do I watch hockey? Stress relief! Okay. We can, oh, and we oh, will. Oh, Three to one over the LA Kings. John Tavares was back. Jake Muzzin was back. Travis Dermott's been back for a few games and I feel like I should probably mention him at some point. That was a game the Leafs had to win and they did. And it wasn't the cleanest win, but they won it. And I tell you what, you know what folks? The coffee is good today. Yep, it is, yep it's quite good. And I gotta say, the reaction to this game, and, and this video was called Leafs Fan Reaction, the reaction to this game that I saw on the hockey Twitter was one of the most fascinating reactions that I've seen this season. So let's go through them all. But first, I want to give you my reaction to the game. First and foremost, Nick Batan called up, what? Inserted into the lineup, what? And put on Tavares and Marner's line, what? People were calling it a showcase game, and a lot of people pointed out, uh, really? You're gonna trade for a guy because he played one good game on a top line? But Nick Patan is a fascinating player, and man, after this game, after his performance, I hope the Leafs don't trade him. The reality of the Leafs situation is once Zach Hyman comes back, and it sounds like that could only be a couple games away, the Leafs are going to have to either send down, wave, trade three players off of their roster. I know Patan is 24, and it's so rare that someone makes this big breakthrough when they're 24, but Ilya Mikheyev exists, Trevor Moore exists. And I wouldn't call either of them surefire top-line players, but you also wouldn't want to get rid of them for nothing. And the Leafs sent Nick Patan down to the minors. He just demolished it. Proved that he is way too good for it, albeit in two games. So the Leafs said, all right, you want to play on the top line? We'll show what you can do on the top line, all right? And Trevor Moore, we know we can fill in on the bottom line with him. So you, you just give it a shot there, Nick. And if you stink, you're done. And I tell you what, if the Leafs lose this game on home ice with rest to the LA Kings, he might not be the only one that's done! And sure enough, the Leafs respond with, honestly guys, one of their better first periods of the season. Extremely low bar, but I thought it was really good. They had the puck almost the whole time, and that applies to the second period too. And I can't help but get into the reaction to the game a little bit here, because there's so many people I was following along, and I see that these people are watching the game, but they're looking at the box score and going, ugh, look at this, the Kings are out shooting the Leafs, ugh. Because the Kings are out shooting the Leafs, the Leafs are clearly playing terrible and fire Mike Babcock and all this stuff. And I have yelled about Mike Babcock this season and I have yelled about the Leafs playing terrible and different individual performances. Dude, anybody who watched this game saw that the Leafs had the puck for the vast majority of the time for at least the first two periods Definitely the first. And I like this level-headed take on the first from Ian Tullock. I know the score is 0-0, but I thought that was a solid period for the Leafs. Great puck movement at 5-on-5, five five, controlling the run of play, and Tavares missed a wide-open net on the power play. Boring game for fans, but I'm sure the coaches are happy. And you can see the Leafs were out coursing, whatever, shot attempting the LA Kings. Exactly! If Tavares buries that goal, Oh my goodness, how did he not bury that goal? We're talking about that period completely differently. And oh, you know, they're winning, but we'd probably be saying they should be up 2 or 3 nothing. And Patan set up Marner for a one-timer, and he missed with that, and Tavares missed, and all these misses. The Leafs had, I want to say, twice as many missed shots as the LA Kings. And that, to me, was the most easily criticizable thing. Hit the bloody net! It's the Kings! It's Jonathan Quick! Look at his stats! They're pretty bad! Hit the net! Look at how the LA Kings have played this season! If you hit the net, you're probably gonna hit the back of it! Oh, oh, okay! I think I'm getting the frustration! You see how I'm yelling, conveying my emotions? The first period was extremely frustrating, but not because the Leafs were bad, it's because the Leafs weren't converting. And yes, there is a difference! On Saturday, outside of the first period, the Leafs were bad. 
It wasn't that they weren't converting, they were bad. That was frustrating. In this game, it felt like the Leafs were dominating. Possession dictated that the Leafs were dominating. The scoreboard did not. That was the frustrating part. And I was seeing all these people, like, just posting the raw stats of the game who clearly didn't even watch the thing going, I don't understand what's wrong with Leaf fans. You know why I haven't told you what I thought about the Joker movie? I haven't seen the thing! So it's not confusing to me that people who didn't even bother to watch the game and just looked at the numbers went, I don't get it. You tend to not get the vast majority of things you don't bother to even try and understand. Where was I? Oh yeah, so that's how the first period went. And then, this is what sent people overboard, Leafs head to the penalty kill, Ah, uh, They show the stat on the screen, Kings won for their last 19, it's going in the net! And Alex Iafalo, or Yafalo, or whatever you want to call him, scores because of course he did! And I am so glad that the Leafs won this game, unbelievably glad. Because I'm watching this going, I know the Leafs have been the better team so far, I know they have, but if the the Leafs end up losing this game, I don't know how I'm going to calm fans down. I don't know how I'm going to convince fans not to fire anybody. I don't know how I'm going to convince myself! And luckily, thank gosh darn goodness, Alex Kerfoot was not taken out of the game when Jeff Carter drilled him, but it's okay. Morgan Riley like shoved him a little bit to let him know he existed. Because Freddie the Goat helping to create a turnover, the Kings falling over themselves because they're the Kings, Kerfoot flying in and what? Ripping it past Jonathan Quick like he's Nazem Kadri, Alexander Kerfoot with his fifth of the season. That is second on the Toronto Maple Leafs, by the way. Yes, the same Toronto Maple Leafs that have Mitch Marner, William Nylander, and John Tavares. Asterisk, he has a broken finger. His fifth of the season. What is going on? Now, after the game, they asked Kerfoot about his team leading eighth minor, which is way too many. But consider this. Kerfoot has just one fewer point than Kadri thus far this season, and the same amount of goals in a reduced role. Average time on ice, Kadri 17 minutes and 28 seconds. Kerfoot 14 minutes and 51 seconds. Granted, I'm sure Babcock would like to play Kerfoot more if he wasn't in the box so much, but when he's not in the box, what an offensive star this guy is turning into. And surprisingly, the better part of that Kadri trade, oh, we'll get to that later. What really worried me in this game is, yeah, the Leafs controlled the play in the first. Okay, that's what I thought. The Leafs controlled the play in the second. Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. Then in the third, the first half of it, it really felt like the Kings were starting to come on. And it's like, oh my God, you cannot let this one escape your grasp. Leafs power play fails again. Again, can't wait for that one to pop off. Kings get another power play, is this how it's gonna end? And then finally, with under eight minutes to go, Austin Matthews, offensive zone faceoff, scrambles the win a little bit. It ends up behind the Kings net, panicked but great effort of a pass from Andreas Janssen, hits Nylander in the skate, puck is lying in front, and Austin Matthews! I don't care what kind of a game he had before this goal, he scored a game! Goal, and the Leafs are up two to one. And I know Janssen just passed it off Willie skate. I don't know if Willie intentionally directed it to Austin, but yes, Willie, yes, that is correct. Noted tough nose, blue collar, getting his hands dirty, hard working William Nylander going to the net. The net front presence was something the Leafs missed so dearly with Tavares out of the lineup, and they tried putting Nylander into his role on the power play, and it just did not work, and Tavares is still not quite there because he's got this giant like oven mitt thing. It's got like the mankind mandible claw on him. And this is what I've been saying about the Leafs and toughness. You don't need to have a certain name to do a certain thing. I know you can't just magically will yourself to be like Joe Pavelski or John Tavares. You're not going to be as good at banging pucks in as them. But you can go to the area! But it pays off big time, the Leafs score, and now it is time for Willie to be rewarded. Justin Hall creates the turnover, and guess who's at the blue line? William Nylander and Austin Matthews. Austin Matthews gives it to William Nylander, who promptly caught Confiscates Jonathan Quick's jock! Congrats to the lucky fan who caught that souvenir. The Leafs have a 3-1 lead, and tell me you're gonna lock it down from here. And they did! Huh! <laughs> and they did! The Toronto Maple Leafs win the game against the LA Kings, and still people are miserable. I'm still not totally satisfied with where this team's at. Dude, 
Tyson Berry, we got to talk about. Like, Cody Cece is shocking, and we know that, and wow, I don't know how he didn't climb over the low bar that we set. But if Tyson Berry so far had been, like, half as advertised, the least would be laughing. And I actually thought he looked pretty good in little flashes in this game. The Leafs got to find a way to get him involved. The plan seems to be to eventually shove CC down the lineup, and I totally get that. If the Leafs are going to do anything in this league this season, Barry's got to be involved. That guy's got to be scoring at at least a 40 point pace. He had 57 points in just 68 games two years ago and 59 points in 79 games last season. He's got five points in 16 games so far this season. All of them are assists and that's a 26 point pace. Actually, what? Now, what Colorado Avalanche fans advertised him as is the right-handed Jake Gardner, and he, granted, is not that. You're not seeing the befuddling, glaring defensive errors that Jake Gardner was prone to, but also, you're forgetting that Jake Gardner did stuff, like good stuff. I think something's gotta be done to get him going, and obviously to improve the defense. And Morgan Riley, while he's putting up points, does not seem to be enjoying life, like just reading his body language. I think Riley Berry is worth trying. Oh, okay, so like you put Cody Cece with Jake Muzzin because we know Muzzin can be a babysitter? No. You put Justin Hall with Jake Muzzin because he's earned it. And Travis Dermott, I know it's not as exciting as playing on the right side of Morgan Riley, but what if the third pair, you know, less minutes and all that, was Dermott and CeCe? Because it's so funny, Babcock is more than willing to put forwards through the blender and mix things up. Meanwhile, their defense is pretty terrible and there's never any change there. So that's a frustrating thing that I would like to see changed. I would like to see the team take fewer penalties. I would like to see the team miss the net less often, like they should have in this one, and they might have won the game 5-6-1. But you know what? They won. They've won two straight. Did you know that? Did you know that? Let's get to questions for this therapy session, because it sounds like the fan base needs it. Weren't we supposed to win this game at minimum 6-1? No! No, it's the National Hockey League. The St. Louis Blues won the Stanley Cup last place, January. You've heard the story. It's a hard league to win games in, man. Even if you're one of the best teams in the league, you're lucky to come away with a win most nights, let alone a win the way you want it. It's one thing if you win a game against the Flyers where you're clearly struggling. It's another if you are clearly the better team all night long against the Kings and pull it off. I think we can be content with this one, guys. I really do. Will the Toronto Marlies extend their point streak to 11 today? I need to know. Also, when the hell are the Leafs going to give perfect Pierre Engvall a shot? Mark, my friend, I think that might be coming sooner than you think. Because I have a very hard time that this team that sort of prides itself on efficiencies and everything... Once Zach Hyman gets back, all they're going to do is cut three guys. Like, that's all they're going to do. That's going to be the only change. Meanwhile, I think Pierre Engvall could totally work in the NHL as soon as this season. I liked what I saw in the preseason. I liked him with the Marlies last year. I like him with the Marlies this year. He's big every time he hits the ice. He can play a little bit of center. He's got some offense. What's not to like? Meanwhile, the Leafs have a merry-go-round on their fourth line. Spatza, Shore, Goche, who's their fourth line center who never actually plays center. Why not give Engvall a shot? Was that a game worth building on? Yes! Yes! Absolutely. The Leafs won. They came away with two points. That was nice. Uh, they didn't outshoot the Kings in terms of shots on goal, but in terms of possession, Corsi, they were clearly the better team. They were on home ice. They even experimented a little bit. I think we're forgetting that they just randomly threw Nick Patan on the top line against the Kings. Like, if you're the Kings, you got to feel good about hanging with the Leafs that long, but you also got to be like, uh, they threw an AHL winger on their top line for fun. And if you manage to beat Vegas on Thursday, all of a sudden you've won three straight heading into the weekend. You gotta feel pretty good about that after a pretty tough start. Should Patan be given more chances to succeed in the lineup? Yeah, man, I honestly, I'm gonna be bummed to see this guy go if he's traded, because I don't think he's gonna be traded for much. 
And I tell you what, he played well enough in this game that if Zach Hyman isn't back, he should absolutely be back with Tavares and Marner against Vegas, a team that plays really fast and Patan is really fast. I like him. Do you agree with Babcock in thinking that was a beautiful game? That's from the cheeks. <laughs> so many people were mad at that quote because that was an ugly game to watch. But guys, get take off your I hate Mike Babcock blinders. Like, listen, I get your frustration with him. Believe me, I do. But do you not understand what he's saying? Six, five games, seven, six, eight to seven games. Those are super duper fun for us to watch. Coaches hate them. Babcock, meanwhile, sees the Toronto Maple Leafs, a team that struggles so mightily to prevent shots and, more importantly, prevent shots from going into their own net. He watched his team only allow one goal, granted against the Kings, whatever, you can only play the team that's in front of you, they only allowed one goal, and he was probably admiring the job that Todd McClellan did in this game too, limiting shots on goal. To him, I see why it was a beautiful game. It was an ugly watch, but I understand why an NHL coach, especially Mike Babcock, would think that game was beautiful. The Leafs are only two points out of second in their division, and actually not that far off from Boston for first. Did we overreact to this start, which actually hasn't been that bad results-wise? Well, the Leafs are 8-5-3, and three, and you can go, oh, three games above 500, or you could say, oh, they've won as many games as they've lost. It depends how you look at it in this NHL. All in all to the beginning of the season, I don't think we're overreacting at all. And I said we there because I've been overreacting just a little bit. Because it's not about wins and losses. I've heard people say that, uh, J.D. Bunk has said this on the radio yesterday, that the Leafs' best game so far this season was against the St. Louis Blues. Now, I don't know if you remember that, but the Leafs lost! Constantly losing in the first round of the playoffs has an effect on you, and we're not looking at wins or losses anymore. We're looking at how the team plays. We know that this team is talented enough to get 100 points in the standings. We're not even sweating that anymore. We want to see that this team can play playoff hockey, that this team is a dominant hockey team. They just haven't shown that yet, and I don't think that's an overreaction at all. Which is why it was so confusing to me that I saw people just posting stats and going, oh, I don't understand why Leaf fans are going nuts. Because it's easy to be like, oh, they lost, or yay, they won. Any fan can be mad that their team lost and happy that they won. But Leafs fans are actually watching the games and how their team is playing and, with some help from statistics for sure, making their judgments based on that. Isn't that being a smart fan? So congrats to the Leafs on winning a hockey game that they should have won, and congrats to you for holding your hockey team to a high standard. The only thing I would ask is don't be so stressed out about the playoffs, especially in early November, that you don't even recognize a decent performance when you see it. They should have won, they deserve to win, and they won. That's pretty good. So that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell all your friends that we got a brand new Pentacle Pizza Steve Dangle podcast coming later today. Not to mention that I'm still raising money for Easter Seals. We got a link down below. Easter Seals is a charity that helps out kids with physical disabilities. And uh, you can barely see it because of the lighting and on account of the fact that it sucks. But I'm growing a mustache for Movember. You can donate to my Movember page down below. It's, it's hideous, I know.